Welcome, beloved of the Lord. What a joy to be in the presence of the Lord on day 64 by the grace of God. We honor the Lord and give Him all the praise for allowing us into such a time like this. Indeed, it's a joy, it's a blessing in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to be going through uh, different scriptures as we got, get along. Kindly share the video, let others be able to connect with it, and let the Lord continue to be a blessing even to others through you in the most excellent name of our Lord Jesus Christ. What a joy to be able to see the goodness of the Lord and to, and to hear the majesty of the Lord, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the one who was and is and is to come, the arm man, the faithful witness, and the one that is enabling us to come into his presence. What a joy to be able to come out and to just glorify the name of the Lord. Psalm 64. Before we commence, I want us to just pray and glorify the name of the Lord and honor the name of the Lord and magnify the name of the Lord. For he is the mighty God, he is the great I am. There is no other God who can con compare to him. He is a great, great God. He is a mighty God. He is, he is indeed faithful in all, he way, in all his, he does and all he, on, in all his ways in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the book of Sa Isaiah chapter 42, verse number 2, the word of the Lord says, He made my mouth like a sharpened sword. In the shadow of his hands, he hid me. He made me into a polished arrow and concealed me in his quiver. I am a polished arrow of the Lord. I pray for you today that even as we get into Psalm 100, uh, Psalm 150 days of Psalms journey, as we are on day 64, as we get along to read 64, we'll be able to see this joy and this wonderful time that the Lord has allowed us into in the most excellent name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we are coming into Psalm 64 on day 64 by the grace of God when we are proclaiming this and the Lord is helping us. It's the second day of uh, March and it's exactly at 9.59 uh, AM. We bless the Lord that in Central African time, it's actually 9 in the AM that we are broadcasting this wonderful and transmitting this into the nations in the most excellent name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So before we commence, I want you to pray for yourself and tell the Lord to open your eyes that you may see wonderful things out of the law. Tell the Lord, open my eyes, open my eyes, open my eyes, open, open my eyes that I may see wonderful things out of your law. In Jesus' name, amen. For the director of music, a psalm of David, verse 1. Hear me, O God, I voice my complaint. Protect my life from the threat of the enemy. Hide me from the conspiracy of the wicked, from that noisy crowd of evildoers. Verse, four, verse 3. They sharpen their tongues like swords and aim their words like deadly arrows. They shoot from ambush at the innocent man. They shoot at him suddenly without fear. They encourage each other in evil plans. They talk about hiding their snares. They say, who will see them? They plot injustice and say, we have devised a perfect plan. Surely the mind and heart of man are cunning. Verse 7. But God will shoot them with arrows. Suddenly they will be struck down. He will turn their own tongue against them and bring them to ruin. All who see them will shake their heads in scorn. Verse 9. All mankind will fear. They will proclaim the works of God and ponder what he has done. Verse 10. Let the righteous rejoice in the Lord and take refuge in him. Let all the upright in heart praise him. Beloved, I just want to bring your attention to Psalm 64 verse 7 that says, My, But God will, at, will shoot them with arrows. That again in the book of Isaiah 42 verse 9, 49 verse 2, it says that the Lord has, you know, let's just read it again. Isaiah 49 verse 2. It says, listen to me, you islands. From verse 1. It says, hear this, you distant nations. 
Before I was born, the Lord called me. From my mother's womb, he has spoken my name. Verse 2. He has made my mouth like a sharpened sword. In the shadow of his hand, he hid me. He made me into a polished arrow and concealed me in his quiver. This is the place where we understand that God will shoot them with arrows. The arrows of God are men and women prepared of him. In this dispensation and in this time to be able to to be able to release the grace and majesty and power and dominion of the Lord God Almighty in our circumstances. We move to the book of Proverbs 23. Proverbs 23. Proverbs 23. That is where we are heading as we do the six pack plus. This is proclaiming God's word. I am Malcolm David, that I am your host in this journey of 150 days of Psalms. It's day 64 by the grace of God, and we thank God for what he's doing and what he's helping us to achieve. Proverbs 23, the word of the Lord, it says, When you sit to dine with a ruler, note well what is before you, and put a knife to your throat if you are given to gluttony. Verse 3, do not crave his delicacies. For that food is deceptive. Do not wear yourself out to get rich. Have the wisdom to show restraint. He says, cast, cast a glance at riches and they are gone. For they will surely sprout wings and fly off to the sky like an eagle. Do not eat the food of a stingy man. Do not crave his delicacies. For he is the kind of man who is always thinking about the cost. Eat and drink, he says to you, but his heart is not with you. You will vomit up the little you have eaten, and you have waste, will have wasted your complaints. Verse 9. Do not speak to a fool, for he will scorn the wisdom of your words. Do not move an ancient boundary line, boundary stone, or encroach the fields of the fatherless. For their defender is strong, and you will take their case against you. Apply your heart to instruction and your ears to words of knowledge. Verse 13. Do not withhold discipline from a child. If you punish him with the rod, he will not die. Punish him with the rod and save his soul from death. My son, if your heart is wise, then my heart will be glad. My innermost being will rejoice. When your lips speak what is right. Verse 17. Do not let your heart envy sinners. But always be zealous for the fear of the Lord. There is surely a future hope for you. And your hope will not be cut off. Proverbs 23, 19. Listen, my son, and be wise. Keep your heart on the right path. Do not join those who drink too much wine. Or gorge themselves on meat. For drunkards and gluttons become poor, and drowsiness clothes them in rags. Verse 22. Listen to your father who gave you life, and do not despise your mother when she is old. Buy the truth, and do not sell it. Get wisdom, get discipline, get understanding. Verse 24. The father of a righteous man has great joy. He who has a wise son delights in him. May your father and mother be glad. May she who gave you birth rejoice. Verse 26. My son, give me your heart and let your eyes keep to my ways. For a prostitute is a deep pit. And a wayward wife is a narrow well. Like a bandit, she lies in wait and multiplies the unfaithful among men. Who has woe? Who has sorrow? Who has strife? Who has complaints? Who has nudeless bruises? Who has bloodshot eyes? Those who linger over wine. Who go to sample bowls of wine, of mixed wine. Do not gaze at wine when it is red, when it sparkles in the cup, when it goes down smoothly. In the end, it bites like a snake and poisons like a viper. Your eyes will see strange sights and your mind imagine confusing things you will be like one sleeping on the high seas 
lying on top of the rigging. They hit me, you will say, but I am not hurt. They bet me, but I did not feel it. When I wake up, when will I wake up so I can find another drink? Do not envy wicked men. Do not desire their company. For their hearts plot violence and their lips talk of making trouble. That is 24 verse 2. But let me just conclude it here at Proverbs 23, 25 that says, They hit me, you will say, but I am not hurt. They bet me, but I don't feel it. When will I wake up so I can find another thing? Definitely that is one way of not becoming an arrow of God. To become an arrow of God, you need to be in the, in the right alignment in Him. So we go now to the wonderful book of Ecclesiastes. 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 Ecclesiastes is a wonderful book that is next after Proverbs. And we are in Ecclesiastes chapter 8 today. It says, who is like the wise man? Who knows the explanation of things? Wisdom brightens a man's face and changes its hard appearance. Verse 2. Obey the king's command, I say, because you took an oath before God. Don't be in a hurry to leave the king's presence. Do not stand up for a bad cause, for he will do whatever he pleases, since a king's word is supreme. Who can say to him, what are you doing? It says in verse 5, Whoever obeys his command will come to no harm. And the wise heart will know the proper time and procedure. Verse 6, For there is a proper time and procedure for every matter, though a man's misery weighs heavily upon him. Verse number 7, Since no man knows the future, who can tell him what is to come? Verse 8, no man has power over the wind to contain it. No one has the power over the day of his death. And no, as no one is discharged in a time of war, so wickedness will not release those who practice it. All this I saw as I applied my mind to everything done under the sun. There is a time when a man lords it over others to his own heart. Then too I saw the wicked buried. Those who used to come and go from the holy place and receive praise in the city where they did this. This too is meaningless. Verse 11. When the sentence of a crime is not quickly carried out, the hearts of the people are filled with schemes to do wrong. Although a wicked man commits a hundred crimes and still lives a long time, I know that it will go better with God-fearing men who are reverent before God. Yet because the wicked do not fear God, it will not go well with them, and their days will not lengthen like a shadow. There is something else meaningless that occurs on earth. Righteous men who get what the wicked deserve, and wicked men who get what the righteous deserve. This too, I say, is meaningless. Verse 15. So I commend the enjoyment of life, because nothing is better for a man under the sun than to eat and drink and be glad. Then joy will accompany him in his work all the days of his life. God has given him under the sun. Verse 16. When I applied my mind to know wisdom and to observe man's labor on earth, his eyes not seeing sleep day or night, then I saw what God has done. No one can comprehend what goes on under the sun. Despite all his efforts to search it out, he cannot discover its meaning. Even if a wise man claims he knows, he cannot really comprehend it. We head out now to the book of Leviticus. These words are just, these words are true. Leviticus 24. In another three days, will be done with the public proclamation of the word of God. Beloved, just like in the times of Ezra, the times of Joshua, as we proclaim these words of God, 
A time is coming when there will be a famine of the word. In the book of Amos chapter 8 verse 11, it tells us about this. And these words are eternal. And as we proclaim them, they are life, they are flesh, and they are also a living, living, living script. I want to tell you, beloved, the word of the Lord that says in Hebrews 4 verse 12, that indeed the word of God is sharp, is active, is sharper than a two-edged sword to the dividing of the spirit and the soul, and indeed to the dividing of the joints and the marrow, and judging the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. So this word that comes forth is power. It is dominion. It is the, it is the power of God being manifested in our lives. Leviticus 24 verse 1. It says, The Lord said to Moses, Command the Israelites to bring you clear oil of pressed olives from the light for the light so that the lamps may be kept burning continually. Outside the curtain of the testimony in the tent of meeting, Aaron is to tend the lamps before the Lord from evening till morning, continually. This is to be a lasting ordinance for the generations to come. The lamps on the pure gold lampstand before the Lord must be tended continually. Verse 5. Take fine flour and bake twelve loaves of bread, using two-tenths of an ephah for each loaf. Set them in two rows six in each row, on the table of pure gold before the Lord. Along each row, put some pure incense as a memorial uh, portion to represent the bread to be an offering made to the Lord by fire. Leviticus 24 verse 8. This bread is to be set out before the Lord regularly, Sabbath after Sabbath, on behalf of the Israelites as a lasting covenant. It belongs to Aaron and his sons who are to eat it in a holy place because it is a most holy part of their regular share of the offerings made to the Lord by fire. Leviticus 24.10 Now the son of an Israelite mother and, the, and an Egyptian father went out among the Israelites and a fight broke out in the camp between him and his Israelites. The son of the Israelite woman blasphemed the name with a curse. So they brought him to Moses. His mother's name was Shelomith. And the daughter of Debri the Danite. They brought him, they put him in custody until the will of God should be made clear to them. Then the Lord said to Moses, Leviticus 24 verse 14. Take the blasphemer out of the camp, outside the camp. All those who heard him are to lay their hands on his head, and the entire assembly is to stone him. Say to the Israelites, if anyone curses his God, he will be held responsible. Anyone who blasphemes the name of the Lord must be put to death. The entire assembly must stone him. Whether an alien or native born, when he blasphemes the name, he must be put to death. If anyone takes the life of a human being, he must be put to death. Leviticus 24 verse 18. Anyone who takes the life of someone's animal must make restitution. Life for life. Leviticus 24 19. If anyone injures his neighbor, whatever he has done must be done to him. Fracture for fracture. Eye for eye, tooth for tooth. As he has injured the other, so he is to be injured. Verse 21. Whoever kills an animal must make restitution. And whoever kills a man must be put to death. Verse 22. You are to have the same law for the alien and the native born. I am the Lord your God. Then Moses spoke to the Israelites and they took the blasphemer outside the camp and stoned him. The Israelites did as the Lord commanded Moses. Beloved, these uh, laws that we see here in the book of Leviticus were laws that governed the Levites and also governed the nation of Israel. That nation that Moses was shepherding to the promised land. They had come from a place and you see that even among them they had uh, cross marriages. The son of an Israelite mother and an Egyptian father. 
This is a show of the mixed multitude that came from Egypt with these Israelite people. That taught them how to worship their pagan gods. That taught them how to do things that did not glorify God. Now when we read an eye for an eye, a fracture for a fracture, it's not for us now to apply that principle. It is not our it is not us now to start applying stoning of blasphemers because whoever lives under the law will be guided by it Jesus Christ came as that sacrifice that went through and destroyed that dividing wall that curtain for you to become an arrow of God you must know who you are we have read here in Psalm 64, verse number 7. But God will shoot them with his arrows. They will suddenly be struck down. I'm here to tell you that you are an arrow of the Lord, polished arrow of the Lord. When you are walking with him, you are an arrow of the Lord. You are walking with him. You are in him. You are with him. And he's helping you. We move on to the book of Hebrews. Hebrews, Hebrews, Hebrews. Hebrews, beautiful you Hebrews. The most important thing that the Holy Spirit laid upon my heart is make sure you proclaim the unadulterated word of God in this 150 days of Psalms. And I thank God that He's helping us. Hebrews chapter 8, verse 1. It says, The point of what we are saying is this we do have such a high priest who sat down at the right hand of the throne of majesty in heaven, and who serves in the sanctuary, the true tabernacle set up by the Lord, not by man. Every high priest is appointed to offer both gifts and sacrifices. And so it was necessary for this one also to have something to offer. Verse 4, If we were on earth, he would not be a priest. For they are already men who offer the gifts prescribed by the law. They serve at a sanctuary that is a copy and a shadow of what is in heaven. This is why Moses was warned when he was about to build the tabernacle. See to it that you make everything according to the pattern shown to you on the mountain. Hebrews chapter 8 verse 6. But the ministry Jesus has received is as superior to theirs as the covenant of which he is the mediator it is superior to the old one and it is founded on better promises hebrews 8 verse 7 for if there had been nothing wrong with that first covenant no place would have been sought for another hebrews 8 8 but god found fault with the people and said the time is coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their fathers when I took them by hand to lead them out of Egypt. Because they did not remain faithful to my covenant and I turned away from them, declares the Lord. Now listen to this new covenant. Hebrews chapter 8 verse 10. This is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. I will put my laws in their minds and write them on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. Verse 11. No longer will a man teach his neighbor or a man his, neighbor, his brother saying, Know the Lord, because they will know me from the least of them to the greatest. For I will forgive their wickedness and remember their sins no more. Beloved, verse 13, by calling this covenant new, he has made the first one obsolete. And what is obsolete is aging and will soon disappear. Now, beloved, I shared with you once about memorizing scriptures and putting them in the tablets of your heart. When you memorize scriptures, there is a, there is a location where the Lord is going to connect you in the spirit. If you understand that you are trying to memorize which is already in your heart, God will do great things in your life. God will do mighty things in your life. 
God will show you his goodness. God will show you his majesty. God will show you his power. Because the new covenant is where we are. We are in the new covenant. No longer will a man teach his neighbor or a man his brother saying, Know the Lord, because they will all know me. From the least of them to the greatest. For I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. This is the word of God, beloved. Thank you, Jesus. We move on to Ephesians chapter 4. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 4. We bless the name of the Lord for helping us and for enabling us to move easily in season 5. We are moving easily by the grace of God. Ephesians 4. He says, As a prisoner for the Lord then, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Verse 3. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. Verse 4. There is one body and one Spirit. Just as you are called to one hope, when you were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Verse 6. One God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But each one of us, grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. This is why it says, when he ascended on high, he led the captives in his train and gave gifts to men. What does he ascended mean except that he also descended to the lower earthly regions? He descended in the very one, is the very one who ascended higher than all the heavens in order to fill the whole universe. It was he who gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, some to be pastors and teachers, to prepare God's people for works of service, and so that the body of Christ may be built up, until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God, and become mature, attaining the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Verse 14, Then we will no longer be infants, tossed back and forth by the waves, and blown here and there by winds of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of men in their deceitful scheming. Verse 15. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will in all things grow up into him who is the head, that is Christ. For from him the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. Ephesians 4.17 So I tell you this, and I insist on it in the Lord, that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do in the futility of their thinking. They are darkened in their understanding and separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their hearts. Verse 19 Having lost all sensitivity, they have given themselves over to sensuality so as to indulge in every kind of impurity with continual lust for more. Verse 20. You, however, did not come to know Christ this way. Surely you heard of him and were taught in him in accordance with the truth that is in Jesus. You were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by deceitful desires, to be made known, to be made new in the attitude of your minds, and to put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Verse 25. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to his neighbor, for we are all members of one body. Verse 26, in your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. And do not give the devil a foothold. He who has been stealing must steal no longer, but must work, doing something useful with his own hands, that he may have something to share with those in need. Verse 29, do not let any wholesome talk come out of your mouths but only that which is helpful for building others up according to their, to, to their needs and that it may benefit those who listen. Ephesians 4.30 And don't grieve the Holy Spirit of God 
with whom you are sealed for the day of redemption. Verse 31. Get rid of all bitterness, rage and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. Beloved, what a joy to proclaim Ephesians chapter 4 one more time. You are an arrow of God. I want to remind you what it says in the book of Ephe Isaiah 49. Isaiah 49, what it says. It says, he made my mouth like a sharpened sword. In the shadow of his hand, he hid me. He made me into a polished arrow and concealed me in his quiver. This is the, the arrows of God. You are an arrow of God. Be kind and compassionate to one another. Forgiving one another. Just as in Christ, God forgave you. That's the only way you can be able to be a polished arrow in the hands of God. That's the only way. In your anger, if you don't sin, you will be an arrow of God. That God will say that he will release his arrows. He will shoot them with his arrows and will suddenly strike them down. I thank God for this knowledge. We move on to the book of Revelation chapter 2. What a great God we serve as we proclaim the word of God. He says to the angel of the church in Ephesus, right? These are the words of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand and walks among the seven golden lampstands. I know your deeds, your hard work, and your perseverance. I know that you cannot tolerate wicked men and that you have tested those who claim to be apostles and are not and have found them false. You have persevered and have endured hardship for my name and have not grown weary, yet I hold this against you. You have forsaken your first love. Remember the height from which you have fallen. Repent and do things you did as first. If you don't repent, if you don't repent, if you don't repent, says the word of God, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place. Revelation 2 verse 6. But you have this in your favor. You hate the practices of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give him the right to eat from the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. Verse 8 of Revelation chapter 2. It says to the angel of the church in Smyrna, write, These are the words of him who is the first and the last, who died and came to life. I know your afflictions and your poverty, yet you are rich. I know the slander of those who say they are Jews and they are not, but are of the synagogue of Satan. Do not be afraid of what you are about to suffer. I tell you, the devil will put some of you in prison to test you and will suffer persecution for 10 days. Be faithful even to the point of death and will give you and I will give you the crown of life. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He who overcomes will not be hurt by the second death. Revelation 2 verse 12 To the angel of the church in Pergamum Write These are the words of him Who has the sharp double-edged sword I know where you live Where Satan has his throne Yet you remain true to my name You did not renounce my faith in me Your faith in me Even in the days of Antipas My faithful witness who was put to death in your city where Satan lives. Nevertheless, I have a few things against you. You have people there who hold on to the teaching of Balaam, who taught Balak to entice the Israelites to sin by eating food sacrificed to idols and by committing sexual immorality. Likewise, you also have those who hold on to the teaching of the Nicolaitans. Revelation 2.16 Repent therefore, otherwise I will come to you and I will fight them and I will fight against them with the sword of my mouth.
2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 8 it says and then the lawless one will be revealed whom the Lord Jesus will overthrow with the breath of his mouth and destroy by the splendor of his coming so we read this it says that repent therefore otherwise I will soon I will come soon to you and fight against them with the sword of my mouth he who has an ear let him hear what the spirit says to the churches to him who overcomes I will give some of the hidden manna I will also give him a white stone and a new name written on it known to the one who receives it beloved what a joy I remember one time as I was reading this book of Revelation, I began to pray earnestly, Lord, give me a white stone with a new name written on it. I began to pray like that every day. I began to pray like that. And let me tell you, this was not a stone physically that was given to me, but there is a great move of the Spirit that began to move and happen. I come to pray to you to, for you today that as you pray for your ears, Pray, as the Lord says, he who has an ear, let him hear, let him hear, so that you can pray and tell God, let me hear, let me have an ear, because you can have ears, but you can't hear, <laughs> you can have eyes, but you do not see, you can have a tongue, but you don't speak, it says to him who overcomes, I will give some of the hidden manna, I will also give him a white stone with a new name written on it known only to the one who receives it. To the angel of the church in Thyatira, write, These are the words of the Son of God, whose eyes are like blazing fire, and whose feet are like burning bronze, burnished bronze. I know your deeds, your love, your faith, your service, and your perseverance, and that you are doing more than you did at first. Nevertheless, I have this against you, you tolerate that woman Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess. By her teaching, she misleads my servants into sexual immorality and eating of food sacrificed to idols. I have given her time to repent her immorality, but she is unwilling. So I will cast her on a bed of suffering, and I will make those who commit adultery with her suffer intensely until and unless they repent of her ways. Revelation 2.23 I will strike her children dead. Then all the churches will know that I am he who searches hearts and minds. And I will repay each of you according to your deeds. Now I say to the rest of you in Thyatira. To you who do not hold on to her teaching and have not learned certain so-called deep secrets. I will not impose any other burden on you. Verse 25. Only hold on to what you have until I come. To him who overcomes and does my will to the end, I will give authority over nations. He will rule them with an iron scepter. He will dash them to pieces like pottery. Just as I received authority from my father, I will also give him the morning star. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Beloved, we have come to the end of the public proclamation of the Word of God and also to a time of bringing you to know that you are a polished arrow in the hand of God, that you have stand your tongue like that of a sharpened sword, and he has hidden you in the shadow of his hand, and he stand you into a polished arrow and hidden you in his quiver. Isaiah 49 verse 2. Beloved, may this reality become to you. May it become yours. May it become your reality. May the Lord cause this to be your reality. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 9, it says, If you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. So I want you to Pray this prayer with me if you are not born again. Or this is the prayer you pray with somebody who needs to give their life to Jesus. So pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I, confess with my mouth I confess with my mouth that you are Lord. That you are Lord. 
I believe in my heart. God raised you from the dead. Write my name in the Lamb's book of life. I am born again. The old is gone. The new has come. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and with your fire. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, beloved, if you've prayed that prayer, you have crossed over from death to life. The new has come. The old is gone. I come to pray for you today. May God grant the desires of your heart that are in line with his will. I also pray that even as you go closer and closer to him, that you will become an arrow of God in his hand. In the name of Jesus. Let's pray as we conclude. I also want to thank God for our partners and those of you that send your love gifts and offerings. The numbers are on the title of this screen, plus 254-722-087087. And also we thank God for plus, plus 254-722-819105. You can also use that as well. In the name of Jesus, the PayPal is Malcolm in Christ at Gmail. I celebrate the Lord for allowing me to be able to proclaim the word of God in the nations of the earth. In the name of the Lord. Let's pray and conclude. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for allowing me to be able to, to proclaim the word of God in this broadcast and to release this word in the nations of the earth, that, Father, your children will be arrows of God. I pray that there will be arrows of God. I pray that, Lord, according to your word, it will be as it is written. That, Lord, you have turned our tongue like a sharpened sword. And that, Lord, you have hidden us in the shadow of your hand. And you have turned us into a polished arrow and put us in your quiver. Father, let this be our portion. So we thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen and amen and amen. Shalom. See you in the next bro broadcast. Kindly subscribe. Share this video. I am Malcolm David. I am blessed and highly favored to bring this to you. In Jesus' name. Shalom. Kwaheri.